The Lord is risen. Amen. It's good to see you, and it's good to be here with you this morning. Welcome to worship with Oxford Baptist Church, not at Oxford Baptist Church. It is good to be together as a church family on this day, and um, I trust you feel it uh, the same as, as we do. It's been a long time coming, and I'm grateful uh, for all of you who are here. Uh, and, and I guess let me just say, uh, we don't have a lot of like rules going on here uh, that to tell you. Uh, you know where the restrooms are if you need them. If you get really cold, just move your chair out into the sun. And um, from there, let us just have a great morning worshiping together. It is good to be with you. Uh, welcome to worship. Happy Easter.
Please join me in the call to worship. This is the day the Lord has made. This is the day that sees Christ rise. This is the day of new beginnings, for Christ is risen. Today our Old Testament reading comes from the book of Psalms, verses 1 and 2, 
and excuse me, chapter 18, 118, verses 1 and 2, and 14 through 24. It reads, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his loving kindness is everlasting. O let Israel, his loving kindness is everlasting. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. The sound of joyful shouting and salvation is in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord is valuable. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I will not die but live and tell of the works of the Lord. The Lord has disciplined me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I shall enter through them. I shall give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous will enter through it. I shall give thanks to you, for you have answered me and you have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's pray together. God of hope, in the midst of death, you call forth life. When all hope seemed gone, you raised Jesus from the grave. We now come before you today, longing for your life-giving presence. God of new life, raise us up with all your people. Lift us from the tombs of our despair and doubt that we may rejoice in your power over death. God of joy, fill our hearts with hallelujahs as we sing your praises now and forevermore. Glory to God. Hallelujah and amen.
share in the familiar scripture of John chapter 20. It's the story of Mary going to the tomb early in the morning. Peter and the disciple Jesus loved joining her there. And us learning of the resurrection for the first time. Hear now this reading of the gospel. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two of them were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrapping lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb, and he saw the linen lying there. And the cloth that had been on Jesus' head was not lying with the linen wrappings, but was rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, he also went in, and he saw and he believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't know that it was Jesus. Jesus says to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? And supposing him to be the gardener, she says, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus says to her, Mary, and she turned away, and, or she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus says to her, don't hold on to me, because I've not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the good news of our Lord Jesus. Let's all say together, thanks be to God. That's right. That's what's up. Owen knows when to celebrate. He is risen indeed. And it is great to be able to be together and to celebrate it. Of all the strange feelings, as strange as it is to be looking at a massed crowd of people in an open-air basketball arena of sorts, um, it's much more normal than preaching an Easter sermon to a video camera, I can assure you of that. And even though our video-based worship has helped us, I think if we've all learned one thing in this last year, it's that uh, we're not built for video-based church. It's fine to watch sermons on TV. Hayes Barton is a gift to those of us who uh, can't be at church when we want to be. And, and certainly the sermons of TV preachers can be helpful at times. But God's people are meant to gather. And so it is good to be together to gather and to experience the gift of gathering, which is kind of the point I want to see in the Easter sermon today. See, the reason that gathering is valuable or important, I'm going to hold this so I can be a little more flexible, is, is that when we gather as a church, we each bring a unique perspective to the work and presence and love of, of God. 
we gather as a family of God with, well, if we remember from Corinthians, as the body of Christ, each with different gifts, each with different strengths, each with different things that we understand and can share with one another. Alone, none of us, all of us can come, alone, each of us can comprehend a little bit of the resurrection. Each of us can comprehend a little bit of what God is doing in the world. But, but together, sharing our lives and sharing our stories helps bring the power of God to life, to make it more real and to make it more whole. I've shared this parable before. It's, it's an Eastern, a parable from Eastern philosophy. If the summer runs away, someone else can just pick it up and read it. But it's this parable from Eastern philosophy that says this. A, a group of, of blind men had heard that a strange animal called an elephant had come to town. And out of curiosity, they said, let's go see, let's go see, let's go find out and inspect what this elephant is all about. So we will inspect it and know it by touch as we are able. So these blind men, they sought it out, and when they found the elephant, they groped it, and, and, and the first person says, well, well, this is like a thick snake because his hands had landed on the trunk. Another who reached the ear says, well, no, an elephant is kind of like a fan. And another person whose hand reaches the leg says, no, 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 an elephant is like a pillar of a tree trunk. And the blind man who, 